Hey y'all, Infinite Enzo here, and tonight we are going to do some part swapping on the 4MAX Scout. Let's get into it. All right, hope you guys are all doing well today. I've had a very long one myself, um, very late night working today, so wanted to unwind, do some part swapping on some knives, sitting here with a nice cup of tea, and we are gonna get into it here. So what I wanted to do was, I have the Formax Scout here from DLT Trading. Um, this is their exclusive version through that retailer, and it comes in this OD green handle, and black lock bar, black blade, and it's really cool. And between my two, it's probably my favorite, but I gotta tell you guys, I got this one in, and that stone wash on this blade, my goodness. And I prefer my blades uncoated because I do a lot of food prep with them. So for me, you know, I started thinking, well, the best of both worlds would just be to take them apart and do some part swapping. I love those green handles and I love this gorgeous stone wash on this. Honestly, this is one of the best stone washes I've seen in God, quite a while. So we are going to take the best of both worlds with these blades and we will wind up with a green handled stone wash blade and a blacked out for Max Scout. So I think both results are going to be really cool. All right, I believe these are Going to be using T10s on the pivots, the iFixit toolkit as always. Great little toolkit. It's fun to be doing some disassembly videos again. I like getting back into this. So let's start off with let's start off with the DLT trading one. Get in there and remove that T10 on the pivot here. No problems there. Put the blacked out parts on this side. Let's go ahead and do the same on our standard Formax scout. I'm gonna try to keep everything as isolated between these two knives as best I can. Now I'm predicting that those are T6s on the body screws. Let's see here. Indeed they are. I feel, I've never taken apart the Formax Scout before, but I feel pretty well prepared for it because it seems like the construction is going to be very similar to that of the 8010, which I have taken apart many 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 times so hopefully this is going to be nice and straightforward now let's see is that going to yep that's going to lift right off we're just going to have to work it loose come on now there we go that bad boy didn't really didn't really want to come off Okay, this is gonna be fun. I can tell already. All right, let's see here. Let's go ahead and, de and undeploy that blade. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna be better off with it in this position. And there's our first OD green scale here. Now, in, in my studio lighting, it looks a little bit darker than OD, but in reality, it is, it's actually kind of more of a an emerald color oddly enough than uh, more so that than a true od we'll put that right there now let's let's look into getting the i'm assuming this is aluminum but i don't know getting this skate this uh inner liner off i think it's going to be a matter of trying to walk it out but when you get these things both of these knives are pretty much factory fresh i've carried this green one a couple times but not a lot um, and when you get them like this out of the factory, they're very stiff to, to get these parts apart. Now it's coming off on the end here, but those locator pins are not gonna make my job easy. Might have to do a little bit of light, light prying. So let's go ahead and get a flat head out again, just a nice little thin one, so we don't do any damage here.
Oh, come on. Okay, we're free of the pivot. Okay, there goes a locator pin. Let's set that aside. Now we can get, yep, there it goes. All right, guys. That was a struggle, but here we are with the exposed <laughs> Formax Scout. Uh, here on out, hopefully things will get a little bit easier. We need to note that this locator pin right here drops into that hole right there uh, behind the tang of the blade. Kind of an odd area for a locator pin. I'm trying to think about why that would be positioned there, but uh, I'm not going to fault them for it. So let's go ahead and take the blade out here. Okay, got our blade out, we'll set that aside, and let's start taking it apart from the other side. But before we get really cracking here, I'm actually going to move this guy out of the way along with its pivot screw, and then we'll really get this guy uh, organized here. So let's see. Uh, as always, we have, as Cold Steel always likes to do, uh, tef a combination Teflon and bronze washers. I'm going to set those right over here next to the blade. And then on the other side, did it get both of them? Yes, it did. So once again, rem we'll remember that the Teflon goes, the Teflon uh, is adjacent to the blade while the phosphor bronze is adjacent to the scales, to the liners, I should say. All right, moving forward, let me go ahead and put this locator pin where it actually rests inside the knife behind the blade tang there. Let's pop that pivot out if we can. That bad boy's really in there. Huh. There we go. All right. Let's see. V-shaped pivot as always, our flat. Maybe hard to see on the camera, but our flat is right here. All right, so we'll set that over here by the blade as well. We'll put our pivot screw next to it too. Um, now, let's pop out the lock bar if we can. Yep, that can come out pretty easily. Set our lock bar here, our spring. Let's remember that the shortest flat on the spring is the flat that makes contact with the lock bar. So we'll position the spring there. And let's see, again, similar to the 8010 design, we have some receivers here uh, lodged inside the backspacer that receive screws from both ends of the knife. Uh, what I'm concerned about is getting the stop, oh, stop pin came right out. No issues on the stop pin, we'll put that right here. Get out of here, little bug. Um, and then this locator pin might be tough to get out. We will we will cross that path when we start dealing with this side, which we're gonna do right now. So back to the T6. I haven't, like I said earlier, I haven't carried this one a whole lot, simply because of the coated blade. Um, you guys might see me swat away some bugs every now and then. I'm, I'm working in the garage and the door's open, and so all aspects of nature are flying in here. Um, but, uh, I am a fan of the Formax design, but because of the coated blade, I just haven't used it as much as I would have liked to. Let's go ahead and move that pocket clip over here with the pocket clip screws. Um, but man, it's such a cool design. I would love, love, love to, uh, man, T6s are in there, good. I would love to actually get to handle one of the higher end Formaxes uh, just once, um, either the American or Italian ones, preferably the Italian ones. Uh, let's put this screw over here, actually, because it goes on the same side. Now, can we get that one? Okay. So these receivers are loose. So just so I don't misplace them, because these things, these receivers will just slide right out. They're just sitting in there kind of flush. So as soon as you're not putting pressure on them, they're going to slide right out. So we're going to put those receivers over here. Actually, we're just going to try to keep them in, inside the backspacer there. So now we need to get this scale off. And then we need to get, and this is the same issue I had on the 8010. We have a locator pin that is really solidly wedged in there. 
Now, I guess hypothetically I could hammer it out, but I don't want to deform it. So we're going to see if I can put pressure on it, maybe pop it loose. Yep, there we go. It's still in there. Okay, there we go. That was a tough one. All right, so we need to remember the order of locator pins. We have the stop pin, which goes right here, and of course is implemented into the triad lock design. We have our uh, silver locator pin, which was sitting behind the blade tang, and lastly, we have this black locator pin uh, that shows through both, uh, both sides of the handle. So there's our exploded view of the, four, of the DLT trading for Max Scout. Let's put this pin here. And matter of fact, I'm gonna order these pins in the order that they should be on the knife. Okay, so there's that. Now, I'm gonna repeat this process for this guy. Since we just washed it, y'all don't need to watch me <laughs> do the same exact thing on the same exact knife. So I will see y'all in a minute. Matter of fact, let's do a little bit of magic here. All right, y'all, so as you can see here, we have the fully exploded view of both knives and my work table's getting just a little bit crowded here. So we're gonna start with the Blackout Formax Scout. So let's go ahead and take this side right here, the black scale and a liner, and let's take this pivot, get this in place first. So I'm replacing all the hardware that came stock on the standard 4MAX Scout, which was all silver. We're replacing it with the black hardware. So the only part on what will be the blackout 4MAX Scout that's not going to be black is actually going to be the liners. They're still going to be silver. They're still going to be silver. Um, next up, let's go ahead and get the backspacer. Try to keep those parts from falling out. And let's get that into position here. Okay, great. Okay, everything's falling into place nicely. Let's get the screws in place. Uh, we'll go ahead and set it up for right side. All right. And up next, we need to get our black lock bar and the locator pins. Let's go ahead and get the locator pins in position. There's a tight squeeze. Come on. Don't tell me we came this far and the pins aren't gonna fit. There we go. That's one pin, and that is also what the lock bar will be pivoting on. Yeah. And then, let's see. We'll get the stop bar in place. There we go, that one went in nicely. And this over travel bar is what I think it is. I'm not 100% sure about that, but it keeps it from over traveling, I guess, downward. Um, okay, so next up, before we even do anything else, we need to get the spring in place. All right, is that all the way back? So the one thing with, when you're working on a triad lock, you always wanna make sure that that spring is all the way back in that uh, that gap, I guess, if you want to call it that. And let's go ahead and try to get this guy in position. These triad lock bars are not the most fun things to get into place, but this one's actually going in pretty good for us. If I can get that spring to move just a bit for me. Come on. Come on, you're so close. To worry about the pivot right now. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. Not nearly as bad as my 8010 tends to be. All right, let's get that pivot back in place now. Our flat's right there, flat right there. There we go. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and drop the black blade in. First, though, we need to put our uh, put our washers back into place. Let me clean those off real quick. They're already pretty darn clean. Like I said, both of these knives are pretty much factory fresh. Um, but just for the sake of saying we cleaned it. A little bit of soap and water here. For right now, I'm gonna set it right here and get some oil. My favorite oil is always gonna be mineral oil. I find that it's light enough, though it's not the lightest oil that you can get. It does, uh, 
it, it does help that it's food safe. So I am a fan of mineral oil. A little bit there. A little bit more. There we go. Just a little bit up. A bit much, but that'll be okay. <laughs> All right, roll that around in there. And let's go ahead and get that Teflon washer. Okay. There we go. Let's get the blade. Actually, real quick, I'm gonna wipe the blade off. There's a little bit of dust in there in that lock gap there. There we go. Alright. This thing is this thing's gonna look tough. My goodness. So the way I like to do this is I put I press down on the lock bar and I hold my finger on the pivot so it doesn't go sliding out. And let's get that in place. Don't fall on my fingers. There we go. All locked up, y'all. Ooh, that, this guy is gonna look mean. My goodness, this thing's gonna look tough. All right, let's let's uh, continue along here. Um, our Teflon washer here, and we did not clean these yet, so let's clean this one. Set it down to green. Okay, so now. Let's get this liner. I think everything looks good, guys. I don't think we are missing anything here. All the parts are where they should be. Let's drop this liner into place. This is gonna be the difficult part, I'm thinking. Okay. All these little pins have to all fall into place. Okay, there we go. It's not so bad. You can kind of actually push it a bit. Um, oh, it's not. It's not fully falling into place. The stop pin is not wanting to go in all the way. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put some serious pressure on this and try to lock it down, and I will be right back. All right, y'all. So simple solution, really. The stop pin was not fully inserted into this, sky, this scale right here. So just a little bit of pressure got it back into place. I did have to take the, the uh, black scale off here, but we're good to go now. So let's go ahead and pop that black scale back on. All right. God, this thing looks mean. Oh, good gracious, this thing looks mean. Good Lord, look at this thing. My goodness. And you know what? I think having the liners not black, it's, you know what? Like, I think it's actually kind of nice because it gives it just a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of, 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 uh, of style, you know, rather than just a big black brick. That gives it a little accent. I think that looks really good. So let's go ahead and get the final touches in here. Our three body screws on this side. Now, you get my T6 as well. Hoo! Don't run away. All right, always with the T6, okay. As y'all can see, we've got a scratch right here, which is freaking frustrating, but um, for whatever reason, so they DLC coated the blades, but the lock bars they just painted. And it's kind of frustrating because you know, you're putting, you're constantly putting pressure on that lock bar. And uh, like I said, I carried, I only carried this one twice and boom, scratch. And uh, Jimmy Slash actually talked about it in one of his videos. Um, he did a video on the DLT exclusive formats and he was saying like, yeah, you know, been getting some complaints from people saying that it's just been painted and like, yeah, it, it's a bummer, but you know, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, these things are made to be used and honestly made to be abused, um, even more so than the standard four maxes because of course, they're, these are much more affordable and they're also made out of GrivX instead of G10. And I would argue GrivX is Probably not quite as durable as G10, but when it's in this kind of a configuration, you don't have to worry a damn thing about it. You can beat the crap out of this thing. No play. Ooh, lordy. <laughs> All right, y'all. The Blackout Formax. Oh my goodness, this thing is evil. Huh. All right, any up and down play? No up and down play. Bank vault solid. Oh my goodness, how's the centering? Centering is uh, dead on. Yes, sir. 
Maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit too to the left. Maybe. What do y'all think? I don't know, man. That's a tough call. Oh my God, this thing is mean. Holy crap. <laughs> I love it. All right. Onwards and upwards, guys. On to the, uh, the green formax. We're going to have to come up with a cool name, man. We've got the blackout. What are we going to call the green one? The green haze? <laughs> no, I don't like that. Um, okay, so focus. Focus. A little bit of play. No play. There, oh, goodness. That thing is smooth. I don't know why my studio lights are making this thing look a little bit more not, uh, not true to color. So let's take a look here. Ooh, hang on a minute. There we go. Better angle. Gosh, that thing is mean looking. And I love the look of the silver lock bar. I just think, I don't know, man, there's something about the silver lock bar that I like a little bit more. What I really would have loved to see on these guys is if we had metal backspacers. Whether it be aluminum or steel, I don't care. I think it would look really good. But you know what? It's all good. For the money, these things are just unbeatable. These guys are coming in around $110 or so, anywhere from $100 to $110. Um, and I think for that amount of money, it's a great, great, great knife. The fact that you're getting uh, four inches of Aus 10A, which is a great steel. Um, I really like that Cold Steel's kind of champion, championing that steel. It's, it's fantastic. It's decently tough, and it's got good edge resistance, good stainlessness. Nothing, you know, nothing barn busting, but pretty darn good for the money. Um, so, okay, let's line these bad boys up, man. That top one, good lord. This guy's just mean. Oh, man. I don't know, guys. Now, y'all see all my thumbprints and stuff on the blade. That's just thumbprints. Um, the light from my studio light is actually kind of reflecting off of it a bit. Because I will say the DLC finish on this blade is, as you can see, it's pretty shiny. It's not a matte finish. It's definitely kind of a gloss finish. Gosh, this guy looks just... Oh, man. Just mean looking. I don't know, guys. I'm definitely letting one of these go. But I just don't know which. Uh, I know I said earlier in the intro, like, you know, I'm a fan of uncoated blades so I can do food prep. But I don't know, dude. This, this thing is just... Good gracious. I gotta think on it. What do you guys think? Tell me which one appeals to you the most and why uh, i'd love to hear your feedback and uh yeah thanks for joining me tonight it's kind of a random disassembly here but it was fun so yeah i hope you guys are well and i uh, hope you continue to be well and um stick around for the next one all right see you guys all right y'all so after i finished the Formax part swap i decided to make some changes to the green one and as you can see here i did a writ dye an apricot orange on those green scales and I think it turned out awesome. It really is more of a burnt orange, kind of this like beautiful kind of autumn color and I think it just looks fantastic. Paired that with a gray paracord wrap on the lanyard and I just think it, it just looks awesome. Uh, I haven't come up with a name for this one yet. It really needs a name though and I've got to make it something autumnal kind of <laughs> related if you guys will let me use that word. But let me know what you think. I think it turned out awesome. I'm going to throw in some glamour shots of both knives after we just finish taking a look at this one. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video, and I will see you all next time.